Hello YouTube, this is Brother Luke, uh, Sin City Preacher. Uh, today, before I get into the real subject matter of the video, I just want to lay uh, some foundational principles. I'm finding that uh, many people are confused. Uh, they don't seem to see the difference between uh, salvation and sanctification. So let me clarify that right now. Uh, salvation is a one-time event. Uh, this happens uh, when a person puts their faith completely in Jesus Christ as their Savior. Uh, if, if you believe right now that uh, you're a sinner and you can't save yourself no matter what you do and you need Jesus Christ as your Savior and you believe that Jesus died for your sins and you believe that you're going to go to heaven for one reason alone. And that is because Jesus is your Savior since he died for your sins. When you believe that, then you are saved at that very instant. And this is uh, then settled, it's final, and you can never lose your salvation for any reason. But sanctification is something that happens after someone gets saved. Uh, sanctification is a process of change uh, over our lifetimes and the Holy Spirit that lives in a believer uh, begins a transformation process uh, so that they will hopefully grow uh, and mature into a productive Christian and this is a lifetime process of sanctification uh, but what I'm seeing is that people don't understand that the sanctification process uh, is different for each of us. We're, we're unique individuals. Uh, just as our lives are unique uh, if, if we're not a Christian, Let, let's say you you have a child that's born today. Um, two children uh, born today are not going to have identical lives. Uh, their life's journeys go different ways. They're unique. Uh, some people, their lives lead to great successes. Most people, it's a life of mediocre, mediocrity. And then some people, their lives are abject failures. Uh, our journeys are unique. And this concept is also true for those of us who are uh, Christians. Uh, we put our faith in Jesus Christ. We are born again as a child of God. When we believe in Jesus, we become a child of God. And from that moment on, uh, we're unique in our sanctification process. Now, some people, some Christians, will embrace sanctification. And uh, they will follow the promptings of the Holy Spirit that lives inside them that is attempting to transform them. And those Christians will grow and mature spiritually. Uh, some other believers, though, they resist and they, they grieve the Spirit. Um, some saved believers, <clears throat> they refuse the Spirit's promptings. And it reaches the point that there's no longer even any conviction and the Holy Spirit is quenched. So uh, we have to understand that everyone is unique. We should not expect the same type of spiritual growth in everyone. Now those of you who are familiar with my ministry, <clears throat> you know that uh, I am an evangelist. <clears throat> I'm not a pastor. And the role of an evangelist is different than the role of a pastor. Uh, an, an evangelist, uh, the analogy I would give you is an evangelist is like an obstetrician. An obstetrician is a type of doctor that specializes in uh, <clears throat> childbirth. It helps a woman have a child, bring a new child into the world. So an evangelist is someone who is specializing in uh, the new birth, uh, helping people get born again spiritually, become saved. 
But a, a pastor, uh, I would more compare them with your regular medical doctor. Uh, and the doctor's uh, function, sometimes they will serve to help in a childbirth. But most doctors, they, their primary uh, work is in helping heal and uh, help the sick. So if someone is spiritually sick, uh, the pastor's job is to help them through the scriptures to uh, uh, understand stand the scriptures and to grow and mature and also serves as a teacher. So once I give the, the, the good news to someone about salvation and they receive it, uh, my job is done. Uh, at that point, I'm going to rely uh, on uh, the Holy Spirit that lives inside them and, and also their pastor uh, to uh, their responsibility then is to sanctify them and help them grow and mature. And I certainly trust the Holy Spirit and that the Holy Spirit is capable of, of handling that. Um, now, this leads me to the real um, subject matter here. Uh, I want to kind of play out a conversation that I've had in the past with a good friend of mine. <coughs> uh, I'll refer to him as Thomas today, and uh, because you'll see that uh, uh, the, the dialogue we have is uh, kind of like Doubting Thomas. He's skeptical. Uh, now, both Thomas and I uh, make this clear that Thomas and I, we agree on a salvation comes through faith alone, in Christ alone, with no religious works required for salvation. Uh, and we both agree that a person can never lose their salvation. We believe in the doctrine of eternal security. So Thomas and I would agree on those doctrines. But the conversation goes something like this. Thomas would ask me, Brother, <clears throat> tell me, what, what percentage of uh, professed Christians do you think are truly saved? <laughs> I've heard the same kind of question from many people on YouTube, too. Uh, they, they seem to be very concerned about if someone is truly saved. Uh, so, uh, Brother Thomas asked me this question, and when he says, uh, of professed Christians, all those people who would identify themselves as a Christian. Um, and I said, well, I, how am I supposed to know? Uh, I, only God knows their heart. Uh, but uh, Brother Thomas will go on and say, uh, but it's hard for me to believe that someone is truly saved uh, if uh, they, they don't seem to have any uh, reverence for Jesus. They don't have any real regard. Uh, you know, maybe they, uh, uh, they say they got saved at some point in their life, and from that point on, they, they don't seem to have any like, special place for Jesus. And uh, some of them even uh, not only do not revere and love Jesus, but they even <clears throat> will throw out the name of Jesus as a, a, you know, in their conversations as disrespectfully sometimes. And do you really think someone like that is truly saved? Well, how am I supposed to know, Brother Thomas? I can't look into their heart. Uh, and then he'd say, well, they're also, uh, it seemed like that uh, if they were really saved and they, they really believe that there's a real heaven and a real hell and the lost people are going to go and go to hell, that they would care enough to be out here in the street passing out tracks and, and witnessing the people the way, the way we're doing it. If they're not doing that, do you really think they're truly saved? <laughs> and I say, Brother Thomas, I, I don't know. I, I, I can't look into their, their heart. Um, he said, well, 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 surely you don't think that all of these people who are professed Christians are, are truly saved. I said, well, I, I, I know that they, there certainly are some people that um, 
are labeled as Christians. They identify themselves as a Christian, but they're not really saved. I, I know that, certainly. Uh, we look at the parable of the, the, weak, the terrors, and that the, uh, the terrors are, are growing right alongside the, the wheat, and they, they look like wheat, but uh, they're not. They're, they're fakes. It's, it's, uh, it's a different plant. Uh, so the, the terrors in that parable, these people uh, in the churches, uh, they are the people that identify themselves as Christians, and they're really one, or, one of two things that's, that's really the truth about them. Uh, some of them are deceivers. They, they know they don't believe, and yet they're pretending to be believers, and they are deceiving you. Uh, then some of the people who uh, are terrors, uh, I would describe them in another way. Uh, they are deluded. They really believe they're, they're saved. Uh, they are sincere, uh, but their, their salvation, they're basing their salvation, uh, they're justifying it on something besides the blood of Jesus shed for their sins. They're justifying their salvation, um, just as it says in Matthew, uh, Lord, Lord, didn't we prophesy in your name? Didn't we do this and didn't do that? And Jesus said, depart from me. Workers of iniquity, I never knew you. And these are the lordship salvationists, uh, the work salvationists, uh, all those people who are um, not relying on the shed blood of Jesus for their salvation, but instead they are trying to be justified by their own efforts through this uh, personal merit system. So a lot of these people are tares. They really believe they're saved, but they are, uh, as Paul said, called them foolish Galatians. Uh, Pharisees, uh, Judaizers, uh, they, uh, it's, it's another gospel that is a false gospel that doesn't save. So, Brother Thomas, yes, uh, there are some people who are professing to be Christians that are not truly saved. But um, I, I believe what uh, we must do is uh, we, we must um, accept a person's testimony. Uh, because if, if someone if someone confesses with their mouth the true uh, message of salvation, then I have to accept that. Uh, we I, I think we're we, we really need to just accept that they are a saved, truly saved Christian. If they say their faith is based upon the true uh, salvation. Uh, method, which is faith alone in Christ alone. So if I ask someone, uh, are you going to go to heaven when you die? And, and if so, why? And if they say, yes, I certainly am going to heaven, I'm going to heaven because uh, Jesus died for all my sins. I'm going to heaven for that reason alone, because he's my Savior. So if, if they give me the right confession of faith, then I'm certainly going to accept that uh, they are truly saved. Uh, regardless of uh, you know all these other things that uh, people like to point out, to, uh, that is, that is uh, not really a question of salvation, but it's a question of sanctification. Um, otherwise, we're in a real problem if, if we if we see someone that uh, they say the right thing, but they're not doing the right things, then then we have to uh, go back to them and say, you know. Uh, uh, I, I know I told you about uh, how to get saved, and I know you said you believe, but then uh, I, I really wonder if you're really saved, because uh, I haven't seen any change in your life. Well, what we've done then <laughs> is we've gone back to them, and we've come back with a second message that's different than the first. We're coming back to them and it's telling them that that faith alone that we told them originally is insufficient because you, you haven't changed in any way. Therefore, and now I'm telling you that you're not only going to have the faith, but I better see some change in your life. <laughs> so I'm certainly, I would rather just uh, accept their confession of faith instead of go back to them and uh, have to present a false message, putting a, a, a burden on them. Uh, that they somehow have to prove to me they're saved by some, uh, you know, uh, uh, sanctification that I can 
see with my eyes and you know, show me your faith with your works. Um, I, and I, or I could also say, well, you just, uh, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's faith alone. Yeah, you're, I told you that the first time and I'm still telling you the same thing. Works are not required, but I'm wondering, uh, you know, if you really believe enough, did you truly believe? <laughs> to me, that's, that's also absurd too. Uh, because now we're putting the, a burden on them that there's a certain degree that we have to satisfy in our belief. Uh, so I think we're certainly much better off just uh, trusting their confession of faith rather than going back and challenging them uh, and telling them they didn't believe enough or, or that there, uh, there's no change in life that proves their salvation. Um, so I, in my case, I would rather trust their, if they give me the true confession of faith, I'm going to trust them that they're saved, and then I, I know that Jesus will save them if they put their faith in him, and now I'm going to trust that the Holy Spirit will transform them uh, through this sanctification process over their lifetime, knowing that some people are going to uh, really be receptive to the Holy Spirit, and some people are going to resist it more. So, I, I've seen this even from some of the people here on YouTube that I really love and respect. You're doing a great job. I've seen some of us get off into this, where we're so anxious to, uh, you know, be fruit inspectors and question people. And, and, and even though we believe in salvation through faith alone and eternal security, we're still kind of tiptoeing around and uh, making a little bit of a, an error here. Uh, so why do we have to be so concerned with whether someone else is truly saved? Let's just tell them the good news. That's all we can really do. So uh, I look forward to your, your comments. And uh, uh, if you're not saved, put your faith completely in Jesus Christ. He's the only way to get into heaven. Uh, and if you are saved, uh, bless you in the name of our great Savior God, Jesus Christ. Thank you. This is Brother Luke.